today's adventure is picking up invertebrates and some fish at the airport. I placed an order with JNL Aquatics out of Burnaby, British Columbia. Geographically, they're probably the furthest fish store in Canada from me, but they are one of the very few that will ship Air Canada cargo. Unfortunately, WestJet, the airline most places choose to ship their livestock with, doesn't fly out here, so I have limited options. I was pretty worried about this shipment, but it was a clear day with no weather issues, other than the fact it was extremely cold. It was actually minus 20 when we left, but it did warm up a little bit. The problem with J&L is they don't do what you see is what you get. And they don't really have an online checkout system. It took several phone calls and emails to get an order together, which is okay for fish and inverts, but I would never want to order corals unless they were what you see is what you get. It's just too troublesome and you don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, some things you really got to see first, but with fish, I was okay with this. This is the Sault Ste. Marie Airport. It's just one tiny building, one of the smallest airports I've ever been to. There's no separate cargo building. And look how close you can park to the airport. A lot of other places you got to take a train from your car. Here it's like 200 feet. The box was quite big, meaning they packed everything pretty well and we were on our way home to check it out. Opening up the box, everything looked good. They used four heat packs on the top and two more on the bottom. Everything was still a little bit warm, or at least a little bit warmer than room temperature. Everything was triple bagged. There were no break broken bags, and everything looked good. Here's a mandarin. She'll be a bit of a pain to quarantine, but if she makes it through that, she should be fine. The reason for the shipment was a sexy shrimp. I picked up 11. They were nice enough to include a little bit of macroalgae to keep them comfortable. And it's a kind I don't have, so I'm gonna grow this out. These top hat strawberries came in a bit of cloudy water, but it actually looks a lot worse than it is since everything is triple bagged. Halloween hermits. Uh, these are actually crabs my wife has wanted for a long time. I don't know exactly where we're going to put them. Royal Grandma. I haven't had one of these in a long time. Uh, you can see her fin is nipped. First up is the Mandarin. Uh, she's quite active. I'm pretty sure it's a female. Although actually now that I'm looking with the zoom it could be a male. He was splashing around in the bag and looking good. I got two different flash harasses, a Macoskers and a Yellowfin. They're pretty similar flash harasses. I used to keep a lot of harasses way back when, uh, mostly fairy harasses, but the flash harasses are also pretty nice. The acclimation has begun. Since I don't have a fancy drip line, I just use airline tube, add water for about 30 seconds, wait a couple minutes, then I'll add some more water. They came in 1.025 salinity, so the drip acclimation to 1.026 will not be very long. They're already temperature acclimated. Um, JNL Aquatics are nice enough to inform you their water does contain copper. So I'm using a bucket that I don't normally use for fish, uh, for water that goes back into the tank. And once I do a little bit more dripping, they will just move right over here to their 10 gallon quarantine tank. To acclimate the inverts, you'll note I'm using a different bucket. That's because the water in the fish bucket had copper in it. After washing it out and drying it out, it'll be fine to use again, but just to eliminate any chance of copper water getting into the inverts. These uh, strawberry top hat snails are a little bigger than I was expecting. That's what happens when you buy sight unseen. Yeah, these guys are massive. <laughs> they may or may not end up in my reef tank. I didn't really realize they'd be this big. It's interesting to note though, I only ordered eight. They ship them in two separate bags. A lot of times 
places will ship snails dry with just wet paper towel or a whole bunch in one bag, but clearly they package them very well to survive transit. I got four Halloween hermits. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them. Probably put them in the lionfish tank eventually. Uh, they're all bagged individually as well. This guy doesn't want to let go of the shipping bag instead of trying to break him off. I'll just let him come off on his own. Here you can see how big these snails are. Halloween hermits are much bigger than your typical red leg or blue leg or scarlet hermit crabs. The inverts I'm acclimating a little bit quicker since they're already the right salinity and temperature. This is just a quick acclimation period and they will go into my frag tank for quarantine in there. All the fish were pretty active pretty much immediately. That's a good sign. Having them shipped airport to airport is so much better for them than being shipped by courier and bouncing around on a truck. Uh, the only downside to getting fish and inverts at the same time is after I tank transfer these guys, they will go into the frag tank for observation. So it's possible the inverts could reinfect them since they'll only be quarantined for about 13 days. Uh, that's still better than nothing, and worst case, these guys got infected, I could re-quarantine them, which is still better than infecting the display tank. Given that everything is pretty healthy, I think that everything should be okay. The hermits are already picking at algae, and I kind of think they might eat detritus too, although I'm not 100% sure about that. There's the blood shrimp. I'm sure once he goes into the display, he'll hide in the rocks all the time. And here are the giant snails already mowing down the algae. I really wish these guys were a quarter of the size that they actually are. Here's my thumb for comparison. This is the 10 gallon tank for the sexy shrimp. Uh, there's 11 sexy shrimp in here. The water's still a little bit cloudy. I just set this tank up yesterday. Uh, I didn't do this ahead of time because to be honest, I wasn't really sure if the shipment would make it or not. And I didn't want to spend like a week getting everything ready and then just get a box of dead stuff. The rock is just from the frag tank. The sand is sand I washed a, a couple of years ago. Um, I just gave it a quick rinse and then seeded the sand with some sand from my lionfish tank. And there's no light on this tank, it's actually just the spillage from the metal halides. But the sexy shrimp are all doing well, some of them are real, real tiny. Uh, this guy's got some food. I scattered some pellets across the front sand. And other than this guy, it looks like the rest are all gone already. This is my third time keeping sexy shrimp and hopefully I'll be breeding them soon. I'll have to find some cheapo light for this tank. I would like to get some anemones in here. I do actually have two mini carpet anemones and one rock flower in my display but those have been wedged to the rocks for years and they're not going anywhere so I'll have to get new ones for this tank. That's about it for now. Uh, it's a pretty exciting update. Hopefully there'll be more to come. Happy reefing.